Okay, let's tackle this word problem. So this is an algebra word problem, and it's everyone's favorite topic. They're like, oh my gosh, algebra word problems, please give me more. Um, of course, I'm being kind of funny because most people, when you say word problems, their expressions like this, word problems, no, please, no, anything but word problems. I mean, people are just so afraid of word problems. You got to relax. Word problems are simply an application of your math skills. Now, of course, if you don't have strong math skills, then of course the humor expression might be something like that. But if you stick with me here, we will make that into this expression. And uh, again, uh, word problems, okay, and this happens to be uh, an algebra uh, type of problem. Very common problem as well. And you'll find in algebra, uh, of course you wouldn't know this if you're studying algebra, but you know, I've been teaching algebra for decades, is once you know, there's, well, let's just say there's kind of the traditional classic type of uh, Word problems. So there's word problems like this. There's word problems involving uh, like speed and motion and rates and and if you kind of get to know the set of the general set of word problems, then you should be pretty good in most algebra classes to handle most type of word problems. So this is one of these type of situations. And this one here involves percent. If you get this down, then you know chances are you're going to see other problems that are similar to this. I guess that's maybe what I'm uh, trying to state here. Now. Uh, this particular word problem uh, is obviously the uh, topic for this video, but I have other word problems, uh, other videos on word problems in my algebra playlist on my channel. So if you are struggling with word problems, you definitely want to check those out. So we're going to get into this here in a second, but let's just read the problem. It says a shirt is on sale for 20 uh, for 20 percent discount. Sarah paid $8.82, including a 5 percent sales tax. So find the original price of the shirt. So that's what we want to do. And uh, of course, if you think you know how to do this problem, you should always kind of pause the video and see what you do, you know, kind of can put together. Um, one thing I will state though, uh, in any word problem, you want to have structure. You want to have a logical set of steps that your teacher could read and be like, okay, I see how you're getting your answer. You need justification that is clear uh, you know, your answer needs to be supported, if you will. So I'm going to talk about the general um, steps to handle word problems here in a second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, that's a pretty bold statement. I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, uh, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have a hundred plus different math courses, uh, ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, shortly. Very excited about that. All my courses literally take me years to construct because I don't do quick little tutorial videos. When I teach, I try to get my students to ap be absolutely masters and uh, the skills, the topics of that course, okay? If you're looking for quick little tutorials, you know, you might want to check out, you know, keep subscribing to my, or become a subscriber to my channel if you like my teaching style. But if you really want to know this stuff, then my courses are extremely comprehensive. But I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're preparing for an exam like the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, maybe the Accuplace or CLEP exam, uh, teacher certification, nursing entrance. Uh, there's a ton of reasons uh, uh, people need to know math, okay, outside of a math course because, you know, let's say teacher certification, uh, someone goes, oh my goodness, I want to become an elementary school teacher. I have to know a lot of high school math. So now they have to go back and relearn stuff. So I have lots of great test preparation, test preparation courses. Now, uh, if you're interested, just go to my site, check out my full course catalog. If I don't have what you need, drop me a line and I'll give you my best guidance. Um, I also work a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously help those of you who are just struggling in your math class. Okay, so I could definitely help you out. But one thing you need to be doing to help yourself out, and this is over decades of teaching mathematics, that is to take great math notes. You're here at this video uh, to learn about word problems, okay, or this particular word problem. But let's just make sure you are, you know, really doing the most critical thing to learn math, and that is to take great math notes. So over decades of teaching math, uh, just it's apparent to me, it's like a, a principle of the universe, that those students who take great math notes almost end up looking like this person at the end of the year, and the reverse is true. Those students who um, 
you know, did what I did back in the 1980s, which was talk to my friends, do my, do anything but listen to the teacher. Okay. Now, if I had a cell phone back in those days, I would have been like in real trouble. I don't even know if I would have graduated, but, um, of course, uh, cell phones did exist in the 1980s, but they were like huge and there was you know, like no internet access and no texting and it cost like $10,000, some ridiculous amount. So, you know, uh, luckily for me, you know, I didn't have one of these, but you out there, you have a cell phone and what do we do? We constantly look at our cell phones. Uh, so you have to stay focused and engaged. There's just too much information, uh, in mathematics. Okay. You're going to miss it. And the only way you're going to, you know, stay focused and engaged is to be engaged in an activity. And that is taking notes and taking notes is all about remaining focused, right? That is the key to learning anything. So really look at your notes and take an honest assessment. Hey, are my notes really good? Not good. I'm talking about absolutely like outstanding. That's what you want to strive for. Uh, so as you're making these improvements, I actually offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so uh, now we're going to get into this word problem, but let's just quickly review the basic steps to any kind of algebra word problem. So the first thing is you want to read the problem, and you're probably saying, okay, Mr. YouTube man, uh, that's like obvious, okay, read the problem. Hello, please tell me I didn't watch your video for me to tell you how to, uh, that I need to read the, uh, the problem. Well, what I mean by that is I need to read the problem like five times or more. Okay, so read, reread, read. Don't read it once is what I'm trying to get at. You cannot read a word problem one time and then just start doing work. Okay, you have to read it, get a feel for the problem, read it again, and just kind of keep rereading, pulling information out of the problem. So this is the first thing that you need to kind of have in mind is you're going to have to scan uh, multiple times through that word problem to pull out information. So don't just try to read it once and then do the problem. The second thing is create some sort of model, okay? Now, what I mean by that, it could be some sort of figure, some sort of sketch or a table, um, some sort of um, basic formula, uh, some any kind of thing that can help you kind of model the information in the word problem. Now, sometimes it's more obvious than others, especially if you're dealing with like a geometric situation or something else like that. In this particular problem, it may not be so obvious, but you, you want to try to model the best you can. And uh, one person's model could be different from another person's model. Uh, the whole idea behind modeling is to help you organize the information in the problem so you can kind of see it better. So you can kind of think about the solution. Okay. So you should try to model this. And I'll show you all this, uh, all of mine here for this particular problem here in a second. But I want, to, uh, want you to stress that your model can look different than mine as long as it's logical, okay, it's still very, very good, okay? There's multiple ways to get to the solution of a word problem, more or less, okay, at least stylistically, okay? So uh, there's not any one specific way to model, okay? As long as it's logical, uh, that's the thing you want to strive for. The next thing you need to do is you need to assign a variable or variable. So we want to say, okay, we're going to let X equal to something. Now we're looking for some unknown value, right? Where it's, it is a word prom and it's a word, the prom is asking you for something that we don't know. So in algebra, we'd like to let, you know, variables represent unknown valuables, uh, unknown, uh, values, excuse me. So we want to start assigning our variables. Okay. Once we kind of have a model, but then we're going to be like, okay, we're going to let this X or it could be X, Y, it could be multiple variables. It doesn't have to be X. But we want to assign a variable to represent something. Now, once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and, and use that variable to try to build an equation. Okay, so we are talking about algebra uh, because in order to solve for that specific variable's amount, we need to have it involved in, uh, in, in an equation. Now, the equation is going to be uh, generally some sort of relationship that you can see going on in the problem. And that's where modeling comes uh, in handy. So you can you look at your model, then you're like, okay, there's some sort of relationship going on here. So I'll use my variable. Uh, I could see this relationship. So you want to build an equation, an algebraic equation that involves an equal sign and some variables and some numbers. Then the next thing I'm going to do is solve such equations. So we're going to solve the equation from step four. Okay. 
Now, this is where a lot of students get themselves in trouble. They're so excited. They solve the equation. They're, yay, yay, listen, I, I got the answer, Mr. Teacher. Here it is. Uh, then they end up with a sad face because the uh, – when you solve the equation for this particular value, that's not necessarily the answer. So you need to go back and reread and make sure, double, triple check, that, uh, that uh, what you may need to take an additional step is what I'm getting at. After you solve an equation, to actually answer the question in the problem. Okay, So that's what we want to do here. Our last step is make sure we answer the correct question. And that's not always necessarily the a solution to the equation that you have from step four here, okay? So in algebra, if you follow these general guidelines, you should be uh, pretty good to go on word problems. Again, uh, in algebra, there's a lot of kind of classic, typical type of problems, and this is one of them. Okay, so uh, if you want to try this problem again without me, you know, without seeing the solution, here it is. Uh, you can pause the video and give it a whirl now that you have this general guidance. And... Uh, but if you don't want to see my solution, go ahead and keep the video paused because I'm going to get into my solution now. All right, so a shirt is on sale for 20% discount. Sarah paid $8.82, including a 5% tax. Find the original price of the shirt. So that is the problem. Yeah, $8.82, you know, it's pretty, uh, you know, inexpensive. I was going to say the word cheap, but maybe it's a good deal. You know, they obviously got 20% off. So, you know, a lot of you are like, wow, $8.82. That's not, you know, listen, don't, don't worry about that part of the problem. Just, it is what it is. Right. Okay. So, uh, so let's just kind of, uh, get a feel again for the problem. So what is the problem asking? Okay. It's find the original price of the shirt. We don't know the original price. We do know that the shirt was on sale for 20%. So if you kind of model out what's going on, we had an original price, okay? Then that original price was dropped down by 20%, okay, it was on sale. So we had a sales price. And uh, so what happened was that Sarah paid $8.82, okay? So she had the sales price of that shirt Plus, you had to pay the tax on that shirt. So this was our total uh, expenses, if you will, and it, it came out to $8.82. So conceptually, the, this is kind of what's going on. And the question is asking for the original price, okay? So the original price was some amount, okay? And we know that the sales price, uh, sales price was 20% off. But in terms of... Um, decimals, it is 80%. The sales price is 20% off, but it's really 80% of the original price, okay? So if we take 80% of the original price, that is, in fact, the sales price, which is a equivalent to a 20% discount. So this is kind of a general model or structure that you kind of keep in mind in terms of uh, the information and the problems and the relationships. So again, we want to find the original price of the shirt. So we need to start establishing some variables here. So, you know, it's a good idea oftentimes to let our variable represent what we're trying to figure out. So here we want to find the original price of the shirt. So why don't we let X equal the original price of the shirt. And that's what I've actually done. So let me show you this here. I did the work in advance. Okay, so let's let X equal the original price of the shirt. That's what we're looking for. Now, the sales price of the shirt, as I indicated, it's 20% off the original price, okay? But it's really 80% of whatever that uh, original price was. For example, if the original price was 100 uh, dollars and I got a 20% discount, uh, that would be $80. I would pay $80. So the sales price is 80%, okay, 80% eight, uh, eight uh, of that original price, which is X now. Okay, so 80% times X. Now, I'm assuming you know about percent. If you don't know about percent, then you need to do a quick percent review. But the sales price will be 80% of the original price. So 80% times the original price, 80% as a decimal. And we want to find a percent of a number. Um, we change that percent to a decimal. So that's going to be 0 .0, uh, 0.80 times X. Okay, so the sales price we can represent as 0 .80 times X. So hopefully this makes sense to you. All right, now 
If you're a little bit rusty on percent, you might want to go back and review basic percent. And you're lucky because I have tons and tons of videos on basic percent in my pre-algebra playlist on my channel that you kind of circle back to this problem. All right, so that's the sales price of the shirt, right? 80% uh, or 0 0.80 of the original price. Now the sales tax, okay, when you go check out at the checkout counter, right, you have your uh, tax and that's everyone's favorite Word problems and taxes are probably everyone's favorite topic. Now I know a lot of you are laughing at that, but anyways, you got to pay this tax, right? So we, uh, so you have 80% um, or 0.80x. That's the sales price. Now we got to pay tax on that sales price. Uh, that sales tax, and and we were told, okay, yeah, let's go back up to the problem, uh, that the sales tax is 5%. So we're rereading the problem. Uh, kind of circling back. Of course, I'm doing this, you know, I did this work in advance, but you would have to go back and keep pulling this information out. So what's the sales tax? Well, it's going to be 5% off the product, the price of the product that you're buying. So the price of the product that I'm buying is 0.08x. It's the, uh, the sales price of the shirt. Okay, so this is what I'm actually paying for the shirt, 0.80x or 80% of that original price. But now I've got to get the additional 5%. So 5% of that sales price is going to be my tax. All right, so this is, again, I take that 5%, write it as a decimal. So that's 0.05, and I'm going to multiply that by this 0.80x. Okay, so... Before you um, continue on with this problem, really make sure you understand this layout, okay? So we have signed our variable, and we're kind of structuring things like this. Now it's time for us to kind of build an equation, okay? So this is where our model kind of comes into play, okay? This kind of modeling, and this is just, you know, like some sort of organize, uh, kind of information organizing techniques, okay? It could be graphic. Uh, gra graphic organizer uh, could be something just kind of write out. But this model is effectively saying this. We have a sales price. Okay, Sarah had, uh, has to pay for the sales price of the, sh the shirt plus the tax. And her total bill, okay, at the checkout counter is $8.82. Okay, so now we have an equal sign involved and we can build an equation because I know the sales price of the shirt, it's this 0.80x, and I know the tax now of that uh, shirt, that's going to be 0.80x times 0.05. So I just plug those in here, and I can build myself a nice algebraic equation. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so the sales price of the shirt is 0.80x, the tax is 0.80x times uh, 0 0.05, right? 5% of that uh, sales price of the shirt. So now I'm like, okay, I got to figure this out, but let's just, you know, finish it out here. I got $8.82. So I can just drop the dollar signs. Let's just figure out what X is equal to right here. All right. So 0.80X at this point, uh, let's just say that you know your basic algebra equation solving uh, skills. Now, if you don't, that's another thing you need to go back and review. So 0.80x times 0 0.05, okay, we're going to just, you can use our calculator, 0 0.05 times 0 0.80 be 0.04x. So I have like terms here. This is x, this is x, so I can combine these. So uh, 0.80 plus 0.04x is going to be 0.84x, and that's going to be equal to uh, 8.82, or 8.82. And to solve for x, I simply divide both sides of the equation by this 0.84, okay, as you can see I did here. So 8.82 or 8.82 divided by 0.84, um, x is going to be equal to 10.50, okay? Now, what does that mean? So x is equal to 10.50. Well, you got to circle back here, and remember, um, we said we're going to let x equal to the original price of the shirt. Okay, that's what I just saw for. What is the question asking again? It says find the original price of the shirt. Okay, good. So that was X. So now down here, if we solve for X, we're actually answering the question. So the original price of the shirt is $10.50. And that's it. 
Now, if you got this problem right all on your own, I just must give you a happy face with a mohawk, an A+, plus, a 100%. I'm going to give you three stars because this was a pretty, you know, intermediate level problem, okay? So, I mean, if you were in my class, I'd be like, wow, you're really good at word problems. Matter of fact, just take the textbook, go home. I'll see you next year. I said, you must be watching that guy on YouTube uh, because you did an outstanding job, all right? So, look, here's the deal. You want to uh, get better at word problems, there's one way to get better at word problems. That's to do more word problems. <laughs> yeah, you practice. It's one thing to watch me do the problem. It's a whole other thing for you to do the problem. But as you do the problem or you uh, watch me do the problem, you have to ask yourself, you know, do you understand all the uh, different skill sets involved? And that's where you have to do the hard work. Oh, okay, I was a little confused about percent, then review percent. Or like, oh, I'm a little confused on solving equations. Then you got to review uh, equations. Remember, word problems are an application of all these skills, and they all kind of tie in together. But um, again, generally speaking, in terms of algebra, these are going to be the uh, main steps that you're going to want to follow. Okay, so we're going to wrap up this video. If you like this video in some way, if it helped you out, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have hundreds and hundreds, probably over a thousand videos. I don't even count. I just, I just make videos. I'm passionate about teaching math. Um, my goal is to teach math in a clear and understandable way so you can get over uh, you know, obstacles. Right? There's so many people struggle in math, then that's not necessary for them to do so. Okay, But they don't realize how important, for example, note-taking is. Or maybe they're, they need a different instructional style. So if you like my teaching style, then you're in luck because I have hundreds if not thousand plus videos on my channel, basic to advanced math, but my best work will always be in my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.